So, Mont, tell us a bit about yourself. Um, uh, where did you work for before coming to Arm? Um, where are you from? Well, immediately before coming to Arm, I was uh, uh, doing consulting gigs for various companies, most recently for Arm, which is how I ended up there. And what sort of work was it? It was mainly uh, optimization work on Arm. Yeah, I know you're, you're, I know you're from mailing lists and, and open source in general, because I know that you've touched a lot of pieces of code in lots of different places. I think LibAV is one place that's really still... LibAV there. is a place I've worked for a long time. I can't even remember when I started working on that. Yeah. It was roughly 10 years ago. It certainly wasn't called LibAV back then. No, it was <laughs> called FFMB back then, that's yeah. right. Uh, we renamed it about a year ago. There was a bit of an internal conflict, and yeah. as a result, the name changed. But what else? Uh, not dabbled here and there. I've done a few little kernel things once in a while. Nothing major. Uh, lots of libraries, or lots of like, um, especially in the area of like neon and then assembly optimization, right? That's that sort of thing that you like doing. I like doing that kind of thing, yeah. So, um, so well, the sort of long term thing really is the libav work that I've been doing, and of that from there that. Things have spun off, so people have recognised my work from there. So hey, we want some of that. Can we hire you? Yeah. So it's, uh, I ended up here eventually. Yeah, and Lenara, where all the optimization work is going on now. Well, because I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me more. So if I'm writing uh, an application uh, that's going to run on an ARM on an ARM device, um, what's what's the first thing that I should I should worry about? Well, you should make sure that you're um, not trying to do something that's too big for your device. Right. The PC has many gigabytes of RAM and it's very fast in general. An ARM device is typically a telephone or a tablet where you have maybe half a gig of RAM, one gig of RAM if you're lucky. Yeah. You have relatively slow mass storage, you have a smaller screen. It's, you're more constrained in, in a variety of ways. So that's really where you need to need to hold, think and uh, not just let things grow out of control. So pay much more attention to, to resource management and so on. Yes, yes. On a PC you can get away with allocating 100 megabytes of memory that you don't really need. Right. Whereas if you try to do that on a phone, you may end up not getting it. Or in the case of Android where you have this dynamic management of applications. Yeah. Perhaps you can do it, but at the expense of killing off a few other apps, so it means that as a whole, the user experience becomes for the worse by running your app. So when you run into memory pressure on Android, does it actually kill the other, other applications? Yes, well? it does. Oh, really? I guess you've no, you might have noticed, suppose you start Angry Birds on yeah. your phone, yeah. then, you have, then you go and start the browser. That will take longer to start the browser after you've run Angry Birds, mm -hmm. because it would probably have either compressed it away somewhere or even killed it off completely. Right. It, because the game naturally needs a lot of resources. Mm -hmm. Now, for a game, that's probably acceptable to grab as much as you can. Right. Because it's something you do exclusively for a short while, and then you go back to being yeah, You decide, role. I'm going to play a game now. For yeah. Instance, yeah. At least a game like that. Right. Whereas these other applications, like you probably want to have your phone application always running in the background. The email application running in the background. Or a phone application is a good one. Yeah, phone as well, just listening for incoming calls. Although yeah. that one never gets killed. Right. But the uh, email client that's monitoring for new email, you have perhaps Google Plus running, all these things that you've just stopped up for a few seconds at a time, once in a while. You don't want you want those to be instantaneous when you decide, okay, go check my email. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to wait while the app launches. Right. And most of the time, it's already there because you've used it recently and it's lean enough that these apps can all coexist right. fairly peacefully. Now, if one starts grabbing resource, then it can do so, but the others will be pushed to the side of it. Right, and the browser thing is one place where that actually probably happens a lot, right? Because it, it tends to balloon. Of course, the browser is, is probably the biggest app you're running regularly like that, right. aside from games. Right. So what else? Um, we've done a lot of compiler work in, in, in Lenaro, and, and you've seen compiler work done by ARM as well in the past before. What, what should people do when, when building stuff for ARM? Well, the probably the most important aspect to get right there is to simply, you need to tell the compiler what you are compiling for. Right. ARM is a very diverse architecture, especially if you look over the years. 
it's only recently that floating point units in hardware have become commonplace. Right. So a lot of compilers are still set to, by default, use software emulation for all floating point. Right. So if your application uses floating point calculations, and you're targeting hardware that does have the hardware floating point, yeah. make absolutely sure that, you, that the compiler does compile it for this, and that makes a factor 10 difference in speed. 10 times? Oh, yes. And, and anything was just floating point intensive? Yes, anything that's... From, uh, most applications use mainly integer math. Right. But floating point does show up here and there. If you use it a lot, you probably know it. Yeah. And so when you're compiling, you should choose the right targets. Um, is there, are there options which you can, you can say, run on many machines, but optimize for this machine specifically? Yes, you can do that. With uh, GCC, there are, you can tell, say, compile for this architecture, but tune for this specific core. Right. So you can tune for a Cortex-A8, for instance, while compiling for a generic, more wider ARM target. And it will just generate a bigger binary. No, well, it's not, gen not a bigger binary necessarily. It will simply... The, the, tar the architecture that you specify determines which instructions it can use. Right. So that it will not be allowed to use any instructions not in that set. Right. So if you say compile target an ARM v6, for instance, yeah. it means it will not be allowed to use any of the new instructions in the v7 instruction set. But you can still tune for a v7, which is quite different. So if you still expect to be primarily running on a newer machine, yeah. you can tune for one of those while, while still only using instructions available on the slightly older one so that in a pinch you can still run it. And what's the compiler doing especially when it's tuning for that architecture? Well, it would be things like ordering of instructions to, ah, right. uh, to get optimal performance. Right. And that the precise ordering that's the best varies a bit between the cores. All right, well, Mans, thanks a lot for your time. And it's really, really interesting to hear you talk about optimization and let's talk more in the future.